Work is changing. The question is, are you? Welcome to 99 Problems But Work Ain't One, the new podcast series from How Now that will help you prepare for the fast changing world of work. I'm your host, Nelson Sivalingam, and I'll be talking to disruptive startups, contrarian thinkers, global leaders, and real game changers, and asking them the burning questions about the challenges we face at work. From scaling cultures and adopting technology to improving well being and building fast learning organizations that are prepared for the future of work, we get the insights, tactics, and actionable nuggets of knowledge to put to work. When you're joining a fast growing scale up as the director of people, where do you start? How do you shape the culture into something codified and scalable? How do you determine the priorities? And what steps can you take towards building a high performance culture? Valerie Mann joined us to talk about her journey at Elder, the UK-based live-in care and home care provider that uses the mum test as a part of the carer selection process. She explained what that involves, how Elder provided mental health and well-being support during the pandemic, and how they approached the situation of supporting both frontline staff and those based at the HQ. So let's get into our brilliant conversation with Valerie Mann. Valerie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Nathan. I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to this, Valerie. There's so much for us to, to, to cover, and you've got um, quite a range of experience in, the, in this space. So there's lots to talk about. But let's start with what you're doing right now at Elder. What, what, what does Elder do? So Elder is a tech-enabled living care uh, agency. So we basically provide care for to elderly people uh, so that they can stay in their own home, uh, close to their roots and, uh, and their routines. And so that's, um, that's effectively what we do. We, um, we enable, uh, enable this and present carers and match carers to, to customers. And my role is director of people. I joined in, in September last year. Uh, and I'm for now very focused on the, the um, HQ people staff, if you want, uh, yeah. we have care operations but we can talk more about that yeah um, well, that's what we do yeah and look i'm a big fan of what you guys do at elder and before we go into you know the interesting dynamic of your kind of desk-based workers in the hq versus the kind of carers you're working with i, I want to backtrack a bit more to you know joining this scale-up right this this fast-growing mm-hmm. company um and just to understand, you know, when you joined in September, um, how did you go about prioritizing which challenges to tackle first? Um, so really, it was talking to our CEO Pete. Uh, that's the, that was really the first uh, uh, first inkling to your roadmap. Uh, it really starting with that and um, getting his understanding of the priorities. For the business, I mean that's really the the, the first piece to do, and then um, we're really talking to my team uh, around the challenges that they were facing, uh, talking to the leadership team, uh, employees, and then starting to form a view of the the, the key things we had, uh, and then some of the other pieces that we needed to fix from a from a user perspective. So really, that was. That's the journey. That, that's how I started the journey and the, the planning and the roadmap. And did anything surprise you with this experience of summer? I mean, you've, you've been um, you know, leading in HR at much, much larger companies. Was there anything that you found surprising um, when, when, you, when you joined Elder? So it's interesting because you know I had mentioned me just before, which was a similar experience. You're joining a scale up, and what's I, what I found fascinating and mentioned me, but also at Elder is the uh, there are some there were some really sophisticated and and great quality um, processes in place already. Uh, so there's a surprise there, um, and then some other bits that were almost. Which would have to, would have been in place, which which weren't. But again, that's the that's the focus that you have as a as a startup. You focus on on some some areas and you just live with the others. Um, so I guess for me, the surprise is more it's more a positive one. Is what I find always amazing is 
how companies can put all these things in place uh, over the course of building at you know 100% growth for for five years, yeah. uh, and you know and and just really shortly after I joined, the, we had prizes with the you know Sunday Times and all that. So this is it's really the the amount of good stuff that was already in place when I joined, um, and then you have things that you typically would have when you move from startup to scale up and it's okay there's the you know you don't have much project management in place you don't have like all these things that then that's why we're here to bring really yeah so yeah i think the the culture you know the culture is super strong and almost um uh almost organic because there were some there were some values but not really embedded it's just it's just on a day-to-day basis, the, the culture, even on a remote basis, was really strong. And, so, and is that quite a daunting challenge, Valerie? Because I often find when you're going from startup to scale up, like you said, the culture is is organic, right? And and, and often um founder-led or the early employees who've been there, and, and it hasn't necessarily been codified, but it's just, you know, it, it's People are just absorbing it just by being around each other in the way they work. And now, how do you go about codifying this and scaling culture? You know, what, what are the challenges and how do you, you know, what's your approach to scaling that? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, um, that is one key challenge for sure. And uh, both that mentioned me and uh, Anna Elder, the, you Basically, I was really lucky in the sense that the brand team had already been working on a rebranding project. So with that came work on uh, on the values, on reworking those those values. So really, a few months after I joined, we had a four four sentences, like four four values, yeah. more formed. Uh, and so then, what follows is well, okay, what does that mean, truly? Like, how do we tie everything together to those words? And so that's the work that we're in the process for starting now, which is, okay, let's develop those behaviors. Let's, well, let's, let's define those behaviors, um, and, but have the employees, have the teams work on these themselves. So we're going to have some focus groups. Um, so that we can have them live. And somebody in one of our all hands uh, who I just joined said, you know, I just, I just love the culture. If, um, you know, if you could just bottle it up and, <laughs> and, and sell it, then uh, you'd be so rich. Uh, yeah, well, it was great, but what is it? Like, what, what actually do we, <laughs> we need to yeah. know? Um, and so, so that's what we're starting now. And then once we have that, we'll then embed it in, you know, it'll be very much at the forefront People will understand what that what that actually truly means, what they expect to see, not in just internally, but people outside of the organization um, will look at in their interactions and, and say, okay, this is this is what elder is about, and this is what the culture is about. So that's what and that's really codifying that at a, at a in, a, in an even more challenging time for Elder because it's a, we have an evolution in parallel that's going on, which is really moving from an introduction agency um, to a managed service. And yeah. so that's another topic altogether in itself. Yeah, yeah. And so just generally as a business, it's it's that growth and that, and that, that evolution of that culture. But then it's also a... That, that business changing and scaling. And so right. you, you, for me, you keep the nugget of what got us there by defining what will take us forward, but yeah. acknowledging and celebrating that history. So that's a piece of work that we need to do too, is really to acknowledge and be very purposeful about what got Elder to where it is right. today and, right. and all the work and the like the history from yeah. everybody that's put that together, um, celebrating that and and then then and, and this is what will get us to where we want to be. Yeah. And and then you have clarity around okay, well, what does that mean for me? 
is this is this the right journey for me or or is it not have i done my time here or and once if you have clarity then you you you, you stay or you leave the the ship right but at yeah. least you know yeah and, and just to dive into that a bit more value yeah, that, that's super fascinating and I guess from your previous experiences, that journey of going from values to, you know, things you actually do and, and seeing those values manifested in everyone's behaviours is, is, I mean, it's easier said than done, right? How do you go from, I'm sure there's many companies who've got values printed on their previous walls and now maybe screensavers, but how, does, how do you actually manifest those values? I think you you really embed it in what you do on a daily basis. So what do you do on a daily basis? You you recruit, right? So um, let's have those behaviors. So it's really truly behaviors that we all align behind that that matter to elder, that make you successful at elder and that makes elder successful. So let's say you have a a behavior. Um, You know, a standard one could be um, I constantly purposefully give honest and transparent feedback and let's just put that as a as an example then you literally have that as an example and a question at, at interviewing time at the recruiting time right. then you know right and you test for this um then that person gets on board and they'll see okay thinking about the same example we have a recognition program a peer-to-peer recognition program at the moment we'll have a uh a, a behavior in there uh, right. related back to this and they'll, they'll say wow so and so did fantastic this week you know they just gave feedback to you know in these and these forums i just saw that in motion and i'm going to recognize this uh, and we'll also you know have this in the in the performance um, that we have a 360 um feedback review cycle that we do and so you'd also have that in there because that's what that's what will make you successful now, um, that's really how you how you do it. It's making part of the day to day, and people really noticing um, when somebody when somebody really uses that as a strength and 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 over indexes on those. Yeah. The one thing though, I would I would uh, always <laughs> caution against is for this to become a cult, right? I think there's right. a there's always that balance. Uh, you, it is, this is about culture. This is about us as a community and what we can expect from one another. Uh, it's not about uh, being this uh, this one clone, um, you know, doing everybody doing the, with everybody doing the same thing. So yeah. it's it's that really around that. And you know, going back to the idea of your your fast growing company, things are moving fast and changing fast, uh, and a key part of a company that is is growing that fast is having a high performance culture right um how do you go about you know especially in an organization where you've got new management layers coming in you might have managers who've never been ha- been managers before um how do you build i mean this is a big old loaded question for you valerie but how do you build a high performance culture well you have to define what high performance culture is <laughs> looks yeah. like in your organization right because it does it does vary i had those conversations in uh at mention me and i'm having those conversations there elder and and they they vary uh, depending on your your business but ultimately um uh there is a there are some core tenets uh to high performance and uh, if you have um clear clarity of where you're going so that would be you first, you know, your first uh, pillar. Um, can you have, can you have clarity? And that means really having goals, fine. Having a strategy, fine. Uh, but then having all that um, uh, cascading down or clarity and transparency around uh, what you're aiming for. What does it mean for each uh, individual in that community? And um, and where we're tracking. Uh, and that transparency around that, and really having that that link uh, upwards, try you know diagonally, horizontally. Um, so I would say clarity there is one of them. Um, then it's uh, the collaboration piece. So and this is the interesting part when you move from startup to scale up. 
because once you get to this stage, people have been used to working in their function. They've been building their function. That's what they've been tasked, especially managers and, and leaders. They move fast, as you say. Yeah. And now comes the time where what we're saying is you really need to work across and together. Right. And so what would have been natural at the beginning, because there's only 20 of you, uh, becomes more and more difficult. You focus on your function, but really there comes a stage at which for high performance, you need to be aligned and collaborative. Um, and so that's a, that would be for me another, another big part of high performance. Then the other piece is around um, everything needs to follow. Right. You need to, everything needs to be cognitive to what you're trying to do. So your your learning, your um, processes, which can be a swear word in startups, you know that you need to that what you need to move on, um, and you, you you kind of everything has to to support that strategy and those and those goals, and people have have to align to that too. So. Yeah. That for me, that's fundamental as well as obviously the culture and the mission and the vision. Um, all of this needs to fall into place uh, to 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 succeed. Now, with the collaboration, the process, and the culture and all that, you know, it's it's very much around that feedback and that trust um, culture, which and that transparency which you, that is the one fundamental piece that you need to keep in order yeah. to make that transition. And Does that make sense? Does yeah, that, is absolutely, that a- absolutely, Barry. And, and to kind of touch on something we discussed earlier around, um, you've got quite a diverse workforce from a perspective of frontline workers, of, of carers, um, and then you've got your kind of your desk base HQ staff. And when you're thinking about building culture and, and you know, all of these kind of processes, it, it involves these two very different groups in terms of how they approach work, what they're doing, um, what their kind of motivations are, et cetera. So uh, how does that affect your kind of thinking and approach? And how, how does that take into account from everything, both from, you know, the high performance culture, scaling culture in general, learning, et cetera? You know, uh, how do you approach that? So that's quite, for me, quite, quite transparently, it's quite a theoretical thing uh, for, for now because my focus is very much on the internal internal uh, employees given that we introduce a natural agency. So um, when we move to a managed service, right. then our carers will be a lot more into our fold and, uh, and we'll do a lot more. Um, at the moment, our care operations are, are handling our carers. The way we're, um, and we have to keep at arm's length because they are self-employed. Right. Um, so there's so much that we can do. We're quite limited, but we do, we do some, some basic stuff there for them. Um, there are some bridges that exist today around, around the cultural piece. So we have, the, for instance, the values that we do, I talked to you about that we just defined. We have a, a set of um, behaviors that are very care-driven uh, and that really apply more to them uh, and to the care delivery for them. So we've, we've kind of delineated the values so that they work for, for, for the care, which is exactly what they, what they live on day to day. Right. Also, um, in terms of the, the, uh, the, the bridges that we have, we have uh, things like uh, care of the month. So we celebrate at our hands, you know, um, it's fantastic carers. <laughs> I mean, they're just amazing. And, it, and we, we work very hard on, at the moment on defining what a, a great carer for elder is. So we, the, the whole group at the moment working on our carer value proposition um, because we, for us, success is about our carers. Ultimately, fantastic care and fantastic carers will bring customers. I mean, yeah. That's just the way it is. So we're very going to be very carer-centric. And 
we have we, we have organized things that we can organize an, as an introductory agency, like carer hangouts, where we have our employees, you know, sit sit twice a week with uh, with carers and trying to bring this community together. Um, but in the future, it's going to be a very different board game where um, we we really can bring those two worlds together and think very much about, you know, why would a carer choose elder? Yeah. And why? And that's exactly the question we're we're working on at the moment. But there'll be we want to make it a very special place for them uh, where they can grow their career, where. Um, where they can thrive and have um, continue the fantastic vocational work they're they're doing, um, and so so yeah, that's 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 the journey. Um, but we've and, and got you, regulated first. I, I was going to say, Vanny, like there's obviously the compliance piece, and and this is a highly regulated space, and you know the risks and, and stakes are very high. Um, yeah. So how do you ensure beyond? I guess. There's almost the compliance is, is the base case, right? You, you, you need to get that done. Um, but beyond that, you know, what differentiates Elder or which, what will differentiate Elder is, is far beyond the compliance because the compliance is expected. You're, you're expecting, like you said, great carers who can show great care. Um, so how have you, I guess, approached that with the self-employed carers you're working with now and moving forward? Are there any ideas around how are you going to invest in their learning and their development and make sure they're getting trained on the things far beyond just the compliance element? Absolutely. So, so that's the future, right? And that's what we're working on today. For now, um, we do, we, we kind of have to work with the minimum we can do. So we've developed a, a, a carer guide uh, that we, we give, but that's, that's really the strict minimum. And we obviously onboard our carers onto our systems and you know there we have tech that we use and, and to see our care appraisals and um but we are really really limited um and that's why we want to move to the regulated side because then as i said we'll this is when you really go into you know their continuous um personal development um it's um it's the clinical piece for sure once we again are regulated um, it's the 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 care and everything else that they want to yeah. be, they need to be accompanied. You know they want to be accompanied by. It. I mean that's also for carers who are carers today. Um, I think there's a whole world out there, uh, especially at the moment of uh, people who are looking at care in a very different light, thanks to the past twelve months. Yeah. And so there is a there is a well, thanks to or <laughs> because of whatever you look at it. Yeah. Um, but in that sense, I think there's a positive change in how people perceive care. So that I think there's a role to play there in, um, in allowing and enabling people who want to get into care uh, to potentially you know, do this either by partnering or, or us. But um, this, it's, that would be the different, differentiator for us, but also from a business perspective we are a truly uk-wide um provider like there's only one uh, one postcode i think <laughs> where we don't supply we don't provide care uh, so you know there's also that opportunity that from a, you can really truly go across the whole country um, i guess alongside the the technical and, and the formal processes um what was really interesting is you also have this thing called the the, the mum test, right? Um, yeah. it, what's the mum test? Well, um, I'm, I actually don't do the on um, the the selection part for carers. We have a whole team who handle this, but it is very much you know look at would you have this person uh, care for for your mum? I mean that's the ultimately this is this is when we select carers for our introductory agency. You know, there is a thorough selection process for sure. Um, and that's what you have to, you, you really ultimately test for. Um, and we have, you know, competency and um, value questions embedded in our process in order to really get to the, uh, the core of, of that, the carer, not just their qualifications, not just their experience, but really truly who they are and, and why, why they are here. Yeah. Um, 
And that's, but again, there is a lot more to, to work on to define what that then means for, for, from an elder perspective. And, and kind of changing tack slightly, but, you know, something I've seen you talk about is how elder is supporting your people uh, with mental health. And, and I imagine, you know, generally speaking over the last 12 months or so anyway it's been a difficult time to, to work through but especially in the space that you know elder operates in um it, it's been even more challenging um and so how have you approached that and how have you seen the, the kind of organization approach mental well-being and and just kind of to add to that there's this question around roi of you know say you're investing in in mental health and, and measuring the ROI of mental health. How, how do you approach that kind of conversation um because you know we, we've had some companies there have been companies who have debating is it their responsibility to take ownership over um you know things that are considered outside of the, the workplace so it'd be great to get your thoughts on that well i don't quite believe in outside the workplace <laughs> basically yeah. i really do you know, life and work being very blended and people, you know, especially over the past 12 months, people have uh, truly had everything blended. They've been working from home. And um, so I think that's, there's not even a question now. It's just the, the way we live and the way we're going to continue to live with beyond the pandemic, you know, we'll have these hybrid, um, hybrid systems and organizations. But I think ultimately, um, for us, there is there was that you can tell, right? You, you can you can tell the energy, the feedback that you're getting the from the from the managers and from employees. You know, we we had a pulse survey uh, every month, and you can you can tell that it is obviously going to impact uh, people's productivity. I think the the ROI is just. I think I'm lucky that I've been in progressive businesses which don't even question this. But ultimately, if you're really going to be scientific about it, then you know, look at your your results, look at the the performance and productivity and absenteeism from everyone, and then you'll you'll soon find out and it'll be too late, yeah. right? Yeah. Don't wait. I mean, that's the idea is that you you prevent it. Um, for us, it was it was really obvious. People, have, we've obviously been listening, and that's that's where you start from, right? You listen. Um, but it was just coming loud and clear. People were really struggling, uh, as you say, even more with the frontline employees, with the conversations that we're having. Um, and so we have we we put in place Bill, uh, which is a which has been really a lifesaver for us. Uh, they they now have doubled up that they offer free therapy sessions. It's the Slack based app, and um, people have really taken up uh, the offer uh, like tremendously. It's been a real real help. They've uh, they've doubled that offer actually uh, right. uh, at Q1 because that was that was getting worse. Um, so we've done that. We have a mental health um, support team internally with some fantastic uh, superstars who know a lot about um, mental health and had mental health issues. So they, they brought the conversations to the fore, which is, which is always the issue, um, which is sometimes the issue where it's something that is not talked about. And so for us, it was important to bring that in public forums um, and they facilitated workshops internally, uh, very, very interactive and um, Right, again, very transparent and vulnerable, which is which is what you need. So that's really how we how we're doing it. We have a focused um, mental health team. We have Spill, and we obviously have our monthly pulse surveys. Our managers are attuned to it. Um, you know, we 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 support where when people have um, some more serious issues, and we we help them. And, and there I, is a point at which sorry. No, no, go on, go on. To your point on what can we support and what can't we, then there is a point at which you can't, right? There is a point at which a manager can't be a therapist. And that's also that piece more for younger people to understand that they might try and rely or that they think they can rely on their managers or their, their employer to help them the whole way. But there's a point at which you can't and that actually would be dangerous to do so. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's why it helps the therapist and hence, you know, whatever they need. 
beyond that, then yeah. they need to, to obviously look after that. Themselves. And yeah, it's interesting, Valerie, because like you said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm with you there, that the ROI question is almost redundant. It's so obvious, uh, it, it seems redundant. Um, yet, you know, why do you think you, you've been a people leader for, for, for many years now? But why do you think it's taken something like the pandemic to to really put this in in focus um, in the workplace? I mean, there, there's definitely a growing movement towards mental health, but and and like many things, um, you know, the pandemic has kind of accelerated the, the progress we've made. But even then, it's taking time, right? For for to lose okay. the stigma and for mental health to become. A, a central topic within um, people discussions in the world. Why do you think it's taking that time? Yeah, I haven't really thought about it um, so much, but you're right. I think, um, and I've worked in business, like bigger businesses where it would have been a weakness for sure. I think, I think there's generally businesses where uh, l- properly listening less. I think it was more about ticking boxes. Um, right. we'll, have, we'll have a survey. You know, some people will say they struggle, but they're not going to say, they're not going to share the real real um, dilemmas or issues that they're having. I think it's, it, it's more in terms of maybe there's a generational piece too, where, um, you know, newer generations are, feel freer to share and yeah. talk about this. Um, so educating the rest of us too. Um, but I think maybe um, it's an evolution of society in general, which is um, just opens up more freely about this, about all this. I think the really even in the businesses I've been in, which have been super progressive, uh, you, you'd still, you know, you, you you, you'd still struggle admitting that you're having a nervous breakdown or yeah. a burnout. And I think people, where A, people would not necessarily recognize it as such themselves uh, and would take a lot longer to do so and accept it um, for themselves. But, and B, everybody around them from a work perspective would probably just brush over it. Right, right. Um, I think maybe just more of a, societal view of mental health issues as being other people's problems and and a weakness yeah um, potentially yeah no i, I see that um you that yeah yeah i i, I definitely see that. I, th- I think it is it's almost compounding right it, like you said outside of work we're talking about it more in which case it, it kind of seeps into work where we're talking about it more and, and I do agree with you there. There is a perception piece, right? It is is do you appear weak? You know, being vulnerable. You know, it, it wasn't until more recently are we talking about vulnerability and leadership, um, yeah. and and it's okay for you to say, uh, you know, I don't know or not having a good day. And I think all all of those things, um, and and I think it largely comes down to the types of leaders we're now starting to see. And, and I think, I. Uh, you know, some of the examples I talk about often is is like Sundar Pichai at, at Google um, or Satya Nadal at, at Microsoft. These are not your, um, you know, they're not shouty, loud, you know, your, your kind of alpha leaders that you, you may have seen in, in previous decades. And, and I think just seeing different types of leaders who've got different approaches makes you um, more, more open to the idea of different ways of leading an organization and it's okay to be vulnerable. And so, yeah, I definitely think there's a perception piece that's changing and it's changing for the good, which is, which is good. And um, one question for you, Valerie, before we go on to my favorite quick fire round and, um, you know, thinking about the future, you know, do you have any plans for how you're going to build, you know, continue to build on this foundation from a, future of kind of people development perspective of 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 elder you know what what have you got in your plans so um for our for our employees at, at, at you know we basically want them to have a fantastic uh growing journey with us like elder is going to grow and it's going to grow fast and um, on every account i i want our elders our employees to yeah, to grow so it's and it, and that's really 
for them to be to to drive that success and be successful with it. So that's all encompassing. So there's a massive investment to to be done there in terms of learning and development. Um, I would bore you to tears if I was going to go through everything that I've got <laughs> in place. But uh, it's it's big on the agenda, um, and and it uh, evolves around you know what you need to find yourself. So like and and having mentoring and coaching and you know enabling that that person that individual yeah. strength um but also the you know programs and that will show the scaling right for, 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 for the ones who have not gone through this so this is this is how you scale best and and then this is how you fit into it to help yeah. us scale at, at our best so i think there's that that piece of bringing that um professional scale in there um and then for for our carers we we'll have to talk to you about that you know there's just the world is our oyster yeah. there and it's just everything to put in place. But I really want us to, 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 to differentiate ourselves as, you know, a, a, a people um, developer really. And that's uh, across the board um, yeah. from our carers to, to our employees. Uh, and I really want people to come to Elder to not just, not only for the mission, the mission is amazing and, and that completely unites us. Um, it's really to 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 change the the, the way we age, right? <laughs> um, but it's it's also come to elder to 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 be the your best, right? To be the best you can be, um, and help us succeed in that in that mission. So I know it's wide, but it's it is wide. <laughs> you know, I, I often find when you have you know a great fast growing company with a great culture. You combine that with a mission that how can you not buy into, right? It, yes. It's like a tech for good. It, there's that element to it. It, it is, it's a win-win. And it's always exciting when I see a company like that. So let's go to our quick fire round. Um, All right. <laughs> I, I'm going to try throwing questions at you quickly. And you can try to answer them quickly, but feel free to, if you want to dive into them a bit more uh, deeper. Um, the first one I want to kick up with is... If there's one metric you can choose to measure your success in your role, what would that metric be? Um, that's a good one. I would probably say, um, well, that depends on the phase. Uh, there is a there is a, definitely a growth phase when you want to have a time to fill <laughs> for our for your recruit. To be fair, uh, but ultimately, I think uh, our ENPS would be would be really the the metric. Like if if I have a super strong ENPS, then I know I'm we're we're winning on all fronts. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. and that that really encompasses everything. Yeah. Um. What do you know now that you wish you knew at the start of your career in HR? Um, the, the, I guess the one piece that I think would have saved me a lot of sleepless nights uh, would be project management. It's a simple, you know, boring to some, but for me to know how to run a project in my role, as even at the beginning, to know how to do that would have saved me so much time. Yeah, it, yeah. it's interesting you say that, Bayo, because I would also agree with you that that's a skill that most roles need. You know, that there are like skills which you think every role needs. And I think in the same way we talk about digital skills, um, you know, data and just under, being data literate. Yeah. And, and I would add project management to that. Um, and yeah, it's, often I think the problem has been people have siloed project management as a skill for project managers uh, and just let's get in a project manager and, and they don't realize how much it's it's kind of ingrained in the job that they need to do so yeah I, I completely feel that and um, I know at Elder you you measure happiness of of your carers your clients and um, how do you guys go about doing that? And, and are there any kind of nuggets of knowledge you can share around how you go about measuring happiness? I don't think there's anything unusual around, you know, there's nothing much beyond the the, the surveys we have. Like we have feedback surveys from, from customers and from carers. So that's how we get the, the data. Oh. Um, but we also, we, we also ask, right? I think that's, I think that's one 
one one nugget which I don't think is is unique to us, but it's uh, you know, yes, you have the data, great. Um, but go and ask real people and supplement that data. Uh, and you'll be sometimes surprised about what you what you actually find. Um, mm-hmm. I try to apply that now, even for employee surveys, uh, where yeah, you can't get beyond the, the the data so much, and you need to go and and talk to people. Ask. Yeah. How do you learn, Valerie? How do I learn? Oh my god, I learn by talking to people and asking. So I'm a very very people um, person. So uh that's really when I learned the most is by osmosis from from others and, yeah. and listening to others. What are you most proud of? My daughter. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm allowed to have a yeah, non-work of course. answer. That is that is the, the the my my most prized uh, and proud um Yes, that my daughter would be the person I'm the most proud it of. Makes sense. But, um, at work, at work, I'm I'm just proud of. Um, well, I'm I'm proud of my e- emotional intelligence in a way. That's a very weird thing to say, but that's the one thing I've got high confidence in, uh, and I'm I'm proud of how that's helped and enabled and served others in my path in my my journey. I mean, that feeds in well to my next question, which is what are the most important skills you think you need to be a people leader and to work in the people function? Well, I I would say empathy is uh, a a pretty good one because you are talking to people, so you need to really understand them. Um, I think to to have the balance of empathy and and being data-driven also, um, but ultimately you need to be super close to the business that you need to be strategic and and be eagle-eyed on what the business is trying to achieve and work in a, as part of the exec team that's that's fundamental so it's as business acumen empathy um data um driven and you need to have lots of energy <laughs> and i'm yeah. not sure that's a skill but that's uh, that comes into it all uh, yeah, like adaptable. Just to build on that, Valerie, if there is someone listening to this show today who's, who's working in an organisation where they feel like um, HR or the people function doesn't necessarily have a seat at the table um, and, and they would like to change that, what's the one thing you think they can do more immediately to, to change that? So that, again, depending on the CEO and the exec team, um, is have have confidence in what you know uh, and use data to supplement yeah. it. Uh, and so, really, one thing that I learned uh, from 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 one of my managers or my mentors and since is you can have as many opinions as you want, and you can you can you know say as much as you want. Ultimately, data will cut through. Uh, a lot of these uh, these conversations and these opinions, and because people have opinions about people all the time, yeah. all the time, and so it's how you then turn that into well, here's the data, <laughs> and here's how that supports our business. Not only supports our business, drives our business. This yeah. is how this business is going to be successful. And so I think it's really just always looking help. I think. Generally speaking, people I've encountered in, in this position is in, in HR have an amazing vantage point, right? You're in the middle of the organization. You know so much. Yeah. And you're across functions. I mean, the perspective we have in this function is amazing. We know so much. You know, you're a CEO. You're in the middle of it too, right? But it's, people are the same. You, you see it across the whole organization. So use that. To, yeah. to 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 with data uh, to put your case forward and um, and use the in you talked earlier on about the instinct and uh, that also applies too is that you can see you can see clearly because uh, the rain has gone or because you're sit somewhat you have a different perspective you can step back a bit more easily. 
Yeah, I really like that. Um, you volunteered in the COVID-19 volunteer testing network last year. Did you learn anything or pick up any skills that you thought were kind of transferable with what you're doing at work? Did I? Uh, well, <laughs> it was so direct, actually. It was, it was, I, I, I was really worried that uh, to be completely transparent. I well, joined this, uh, this organization. I was, how can I help them? You know, what do I know? And, uh, um, and it was all remote and, um, and, and, it, and then where all they needed is to, to be, to have a, a simple HR setup. They were building a team very fast and they needed some. And so I contacted Charlie HR, who I knew. And, uh, and so they were like, yeah, of course we'll help you for free. And with, I set up Charlie, I, I helped them with processes and, and things like that. So everything that I had done, whether it was HR or not, uh, I used and I, yeah. and I was able to do it really fast and, well, they didn't have time to do it. They were busy building this stuff. So, um, so that's why I really enjoyed is I was able to apply it straight away. And um, what I learned or what it confirmed in a way for me was uh, how amazing, you know, this whole thing about you have an idea, you have somebody uh, who has money and wants to, uh, you know, wants to help. And then you build a whole team of, around this so fast, and uh, and you create this uh, you know amazing um, beneficiary yeah. organization in in a matter of weeks, and you have all this remotely, all these people coming and never met, but they like they just like they just get on with it, and people are you know being followed or made redundant uh, all across the the, the, the country and. They, they turn up and they say, yeah, I'll help. And this. and then it was, for me, it's just confirming what you can do. You know, yeah. you have the will, some money, the enthusiasm, the team spirit, the united, um, you know, that's, that was amazing. It's so true, man, because I, I took my mum for a jams and I just looking around as the process, it was so seamless, so smooth and, and fast moving. And, and just watching what was going on and seeing how you know, it's largely volunteers. There, there's maybe a few people who are, who are leading at top. But it just looking at the efficiency, which was run by mostly volunteers, it just reminds you the power of purpose. Right. Yeah. Like that, that, having that single minded focus of you, you know why you're here. Uh, you know yeah. what you're doing and you know what the, the benefit of, of getting this right is. And that's really what's making all these people do what they're doing, right? Uh, otherwise, yeah. they don't have to go out of their way to, to volunteer and, and make this happen. And yeah, it's just incredible to see, you know, you can, when you think about running a private organization where you've got all this money, you've got all of these different things you're trying to do and incentivize people financially, et cetera, all of that. But actually, when you get the core right, how far that takes you is, is what yeah. I realized just sitting there watching this process happen. But yeah, it's amazing just hearing what, what you did and what you achieved. Yeah, amazing. Um, Why? Last one, yeah. Last one. And you learn. Oh, go on. you, know, uh -huh. and you learn. Like, like just yeah. thinking about it from a technical skill, I learned a lot. Like, I actually learned about the CQC, you know, and okay. then I found the elder, right? So it's just like, Oh yeah, I can <laughs> take that on. Yeah, perfect. But this is completely unintended, but you actually learn a lot. Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah, amazing. Uh, my last one for you, Valerie, is what's the the best bit of advice someone's ever given you? Oh, well, that's the one I mentioned earlier on, actually, is the is the the is the data. Like, it was it was very pertinent in the role that I had at Home Away. Uh, I was um I was the head of HR for Europe, and I found myself um, a bit of a as an advocate for 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 Europe to, to the to, with the US, or and sometimes in the middle, and you know, and um, and you find yourself a lot like you know as a in 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 people in HR um, in in, the, in in positions of uh, you know middle management or, um, and I think for me it was my my manager. Really, that was her mantra. Yes. So you're telling me or you're telling us X. And yes, you're convinced about this. And great, you know, we trust you and all that. But I'm going to need a bit more than that to convince the board or, yeah. you know, the C team or. And so what do you have to offer? And it took me so long. I'm not a data-driven person, but I built it, right? This is something I learned. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so, so, yes, it's slowly and surely 
just 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 really get round to this and the data will cut through the conversation yeah no, I, I love that and that's a great note to, to end on Valerie it's been an absolute pleasure thank you once again for coming on the show and sharing everything you've learned it's been amazing thank you very much no thank you fantastic thank you and that brings us to the end of this week's episode if you want to connect with Valerie or learn a bit more about Elder, all the links are in the episode description. That's also where you'll find the show notes, everything you need to connect with me, and links to all of our podcast content. If you enjoyed this episode, please do think about subscribing, sharing, leaving us a review, or telling a friend. It goes a long way in helping the show grow. Thanks, and see you next time.